Hey folks, John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. So, a while back I rebuilt my foundry furnace to run off of a forced air ribbon burner to actually get hot enough to melt steel. And there was a lot of interest in uh, how I made the burner itself, and a lot of people wanted a video on that. So that's what this is going to be. Here's the finished burner. I'm actually shooting this after the fact, so that's why I'm kind of dirty. But uh, before I get started, I'm going to kind of talk about what ribbon burners are and kind of the why as far as having one. So, with gas forges, you really got two options. You got atmospheric or venturi burners, and you got forced air burners. Venturi burners are what you see on a lot of beginner level forges and even some professional grade forges. Basically, what they are is something along these lines. You know, you have a gas orifice back here. You have some way for air to get in either holes or a bell reducer back here. Your gas shoots out of a really small hole really fast, draws air in through here, mixes in this tube, and you got a big, you know, flame coming out of here. They're great for what they are. If they're well-made and a well-insulated forge, you'll have no problem reaching welding heat with Venturi burners. And their main upside is they don't require a power source. You just hook a regulator to it and go. So if that's uh, something that works for you, go for it. The only downside is they can go through fuel a little bit faster than forced air burners. And these flares over time do crack and crumble and need to be replaced, but that's pretty negligible. They're inexpensive and they only gotta be replaced like every six months or so. So, you know, by no means am I down talking Venturi burners. They're great for what they are and they work for most people. So then you got forced air burners. A ribbon burner is technically classified as a forced air burner because you have an electric fan or blower or something of the sort forcing air through a fuel air assembly to mix with your gas and get it to burn. What's great about them is they tend to heat up a lot faster. They're a good bit more fuel efficient. Basically, you get more heat faster with less fuel. The only downside is they tend to be a good bit more expensive and complicated to build and they do require electricity to run, so uh, it all comes down to what your individual needs are, really. With a lot of forced air burners, what you'll see is basically just a modified Venturi setup. They'll have a bigger orifice, a bigger flare on the end, and some mechanical means of blowing air through it. And they work great for what they are, but you've got pretty much the same thing. You've got one big flame coming out the end of here. And if your burners are too far apart or something like that, you can end up with cold spots in the forge that can cause problems when doing forge welding or heat treating. With a ribbon burner, instead of one big flame, you have lots of small ones coming out of here. Spreads the heat out much better. There's no dead space in the forge. It makes heat treating a lot easier, and it makes forge welding a lot easier. It's actually kind of a running joke in the, uh, the Facebook blacksmithing community that ribbon burners are like a cult because everyone who has one talks about how great they are. Because they are. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'll show you how to make one. So, to assemble the ribbon burner, you need five pieces. What we got here to start is a piece of three inch square tubing, quarter inch wall, cut off at six and a half inches. On top, I've gone ahead and drilled a hole in the center with an inch and three quarter hole saw. If you're gonna drill a hole this big with a hole saw, use plenty of cutting oil and go really slow. On the bottom, I've marked half an inch in from the outside all the way around. Drilled a three eighths inch hole in each corner to make it easier to cut out. Went through here and here with a grinder with a cutting disc. I went through here and here with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Nothing to it. Right here, we got our static air mixing device. This is just a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal with a bunch of holes drilled in it, bent to about a 20 degree angle. Basically, that's gonna sit up inside the burner like that, and that's gonna distribute your air gas mix better, make the burner run better. Over here, we got a two inch by, half of a two inch by four inch pipe nipple. Gone ahead and cleaned it up and everything. That's gonna be welded onto there. What we got here are two pieces of quarter inch plate Cut off two and a half inches square with the corners broken. Basically, those are going to sit in there, kind of like that. And that's all going to get welded up, and uh, you got a burner body. All right, got our static air mixing device welded in there. Just one quick tack on each side is all that you need for that. So, here's the burner assembly tacked together. You see, we got our pipe put on up top, we got our caps on both sides. So, now what we got to do is go in here and run some nice big beads all the way around and fill that space in real good make it nice and airtight as well as all the way around here you know it's a lot of welding but we can make it happen what's that saying grinder and paint makes me the welder i ain't <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to paint this, but we are going to grind all this crap off the ends just to smooth it up so it'll fit in the mold. Up here, you don't really need to worry about cleaning off just because there's no reason to. But uh, we're coming along. So, 
I got our burner cleaned up real nice. It's looking good. I went ahead and disassembled the mold to talk to you about it a little bit. There's two pieces. The top half is just made of two by four. The inside dimensions are the same as the outside dimensions of the burner. So it can sit in there just like that. The bottom half is made of two by 10, I think, or maybe two by eight, something like that. Basically, what we've got is we've worked out the outside perimeter of the burner. We've come in half an inch and drawn an inside rectangle. Same thing we did when we cut out that bottom part of the burner. That way we know where these holes can be drilled without interfering the refractory grabbing hold of the manifold. So we got five holes in the middle, six holes on each side of that, 18 total, which is probably more than you need, but it's what works for me. These holes are 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. They're only about half an inch deep. So what we can do is we can take our box of crayons here. These are 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And basically they're just going to kind of sit in there like that. It's hard to get in there. But what we'll do is we'll uh, fill up all those holes with the crayons. We'll fill that full of refractory and then basically just push the manifold into it, let it cure, and we got a burner. So now I'm getting the crayons situated. Basically all I'm doing is just pushing the bottoms into those little holes in the bottom of the mold and making sure they stand up nice and straight. The biggest thing you got to look out for here is uh, don't eat the crayons. I was in the army, so usually I can help myself. If you're a Marine, though, you might have a bit of a problem, so you might want to buy an extra box just in case. I know they look good, but uh, just do your best not to eat them. So we got our crayons posted up in there real good. I went ahead and taped off the bottom of the mold just to uh, keep any of the refractory mix from escaping. Before you cast your refractory, you want to go ahead and take you some WD-40 and spray the inside of your mold real good. That'll just make the burner easier to extract later. So... To cast the burner, I'm using uh, Mizzou Castable Refractory. Same stuff I lined my forge with, same stuff I used to build the foundry furnace. The two refractories people mostly make ribbon burners out of are Mizzou and another one called Casto Light 30. Because they're good, tough, dense refractories. They're rated for 3,000 degrees. They hold up well. So if you're going to make a ribbon burner, go with a Mizzou or Casto Light 30. You just pour it in the mold. Nothing to it, really. So, we got our mold filled up with our castable refractory. I've got the burner marked off at three quarters of an inch all the way around. And basically, we're just going to push that thing down into it and uh, leave it there. Alrighty, so, just nice and easy. So, basically what I ended up doing was using a dead blow hammer to gently tap it all the way down to my marks. The refractory will solidify and it'll grab a hold of that lip that's on the bottom of the manifold of the burner. And uh, that's what's going to hold it all together. So we'll leave that thing for about three days and then what we'll do is we'll disassemble the mold and gently pull it out of there and go from there. So, what I've done now is gone ahead and taken all the screws out of the mold. This thing's been sitting for about two days. Normally I'd leave it for three but it's been pretty warm and dry out, so I'm going to see if I can get away with two. But uh, WD-40 helps the mold just kind of come right off whenever you take the screws out. And uh, there we go. While the refractory is still pretty soft, I actually like to go at it with the fine side of a farrier's rasp and just get some of that excess crap off from around the edges. You know, just clean it up a little bit. Nothing to it, really. So, here we are after getting our ribbon burner out of the mold. We're going to let it sit for a couple more days and dry a good bit more before we try to drill these crayons out of here, because at this point the refractory can still be kind of fragile. But uh, it looks like we got a good casting. What I actually ended up doing was just taking this thing inside and putting it on one of the heating vents in my house uh, for about 16 hours or so. And the refractory is nice and hard and dry to the touch. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and drill out the crayons. So I've just got a 5 16th inch bit that I don't really care about. So, you know, just go nice and slow. Don't force it. And then we'll just drill out all these crayons and uh, keep moving. 
All right, got all our holes cleaned out. So uh, the very last step in getting this thing ready is just to make sure all the moisture is out of the refractory because if you fire it and there's still moisture in there, you risk cracking it. So what we're gonna do is just take this guy in the house and uh, throw it in the oven at 300 degrees for about two hours, maybe two and a half, and uh, that'll be plenty. All right, so here's the ribbon burner out of the oven. It's looking good, no cracks. A couple of the holes are crooked, but that's fine. Also, you see how the refractory up kind of around the edges of the manifold is kind of chipped off? That's fine, don't worry about that. It goes up inside the manifold three quarters of an inch. So the stuff on the outside isn't structural, so if it flakes off, don't worry about it. All right, so here we are about to test fire the burner. I got the fuel air assembly from my foundry furnace hooked up to it. I'll put a link to that video in the description to explain more about how I built that. But I got the air going, got the gas piped in over here. Feels pretty good. So let's see if she works. That's uh, how to make one of these things. The test firing went really good. No cracks appeared in the refractory or anything like that. So I'd call this a success. I actually don't have any need for this burner. This is a gift for my buddy James over at County Line Forge. I really just kind of wanted to make the video. Also, quick note, everything I know about ribbon burners as far as making them and using them, I learned from a buddy of mine by the name of Kenneth DeRosier. He actually makes and sells pretty much this same burner. It's the one my forge runs off of, and it works great. I'll put a link to his email in the description below. So if you're, for what he sells them for, honestly, if you ask me, it's cheaper to buy them than it is to spend the time to make one yourself. So uh, if you want to get your hands on a ribbon burner, shoot him a message. He'll hook you up. But uh, that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. Links to the Etsy and the Patreon and all the other social media and crap if you want to follow me or help support the channel. And uh, y'all take care.